Hey guys, good day. Uh, it's really, it's a really windy day today. I probably won't be doing any flying, but I'm just kidding, I'll be doing some flying. I'm gonna be doing my prop giveaway. So I'd like to acknowledge the three winners of the prop giveaway. And uh, here are the props that they'll be getting. <laughs> there are 30 sets of all kinds of miscellaneous props along with some sign props and stuff. I talked to all these guys um, this morning, last night, and anyways, they asked for some stuff specifically. So yeah, that's what they'll be getting. One of them is from uh, Latvia, which is just east on the Baltic Sea below Finland. Didn't know it was there, had to do some research to figure out where that was, but really cool looking place. And uh, the guy's name is Maris, uh, Maris Brakoviskis. I don't know, let's see if we can focus on it so you guys can see. And then uh, let's see what our second winner, he is from Spain, his name is George. And let me get his Instagram up. His name is El Granadio Gren, Granadio FPV. Sorry for the mispronunciation. Um, I am American and I cannot pronounce names, especially ones that you have to roll things and whatnot. I can I can roll ours, but yeah. Sorry about that. And then the last one is Time Yo. He is from Germany and I spoke with him last night and here's his Instagram account so you guys can see. I'm not just making things up. And yeah, so all these guys, I spoke with them. They're really cool dudes. Uh, I get inspiration from guys like this and I liked their videos a lot. There were a lot of really great videos out there. I watched so many more of them. I literally watched all of them. There were over a hundred, so thank you guys for putting in entries. Um, and inspiring me to go out and pick up trash. There was so many videos of people just going out and picking up trash, not necessarily props. I honestly think there were some people in there that didn't even fly. They just wanted to go out and, and be a part in cleaning up the environment. So thank you guys very much for that. Now, I do want to talk about getting into the Tyrannus uh, build video. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, guys. So here is the finished product of the Tyrannus. And this is basically what I've come up with. And I started out with these two colors, uh, flat black, it's just a Rust-Oleum color. Um, it's made for plastics. And then in this color right here, which is called flat chestnut, and it's made for outdoor furniture. It has some metallic flake in it. And yeah, I did two coats of flat black as a primer after I washed and sanded the, uh, the shell to get it a little bit gritty so that the paint would take to it a little better. So two coats of the flat black. Then I made some templates um, for these holes up here as far as the where the switches go in this little FR Sky spot where they usually put their logo and then I sprayed four coats of that chestnut color on there which turned out really really well at first I was uh, kind of hesitant on if I liked it or not and after I built the radio it looks way better than I thought it was going to look I didn't put any clear coat on it because it just I think it's an outdoor paint it's got a little bit of hardener in it I don't see a problem with it it feels really good I don't think it's gonna have a problem but you know if it does I can always repaint it and as far as anything else goes aesthetically I didn't do anything I just put some switch caps on there got some little red things from eBay some little switch screw on things and other than that, I put some black heat shrink on the switches and let's get into the inside so I can show you exactly what I did as far as modifications go, the 5DBI mod and the Roar 9 gimbals and etc. So this is exactly what I have on the inside of my radio and this is a new addition that I did on this particular build because I ended up calling Alex Greaves and I was curious about the situation with how much length you need between the RPSMA adapter and the actual active element, how much shielded length you have if that matters and also what kind of cable to use because that micro coax that you get or the mini coax that you usually get for these modifications um, is easy to solder on here but uh, it has a lot of signal loss so what I came across um, was either to use RG718 or RG316 which are two different types of coaxial cable RG718 is a little bit thinner um, this is RG316 it's a little bit thicker has a little bit less loss but you know it'd be a lot easier to solder on RG718 than it would be to solder RG316 so I chose RG316 because I'm a pretty good um, solder and I've been doing it a long time I understand heating up cooling down pulling pads off and what not to do and what to do so anyways that's what I did I went with RG316 I cut this length of wire to 3.2 um, inches so yeah 84 millimeters 3.2 inches and how I uh, applied this thing in there is I used epoxy a little five minute epoxy um, epoxied on the end here and then popped it in there held it on I screwed down the antenna 
so that I knew how much I would have um, to, to play with and I made it flush on here and once I made it flush on there then it basically um, I locked it down with some books and stuff and let it dry and yeah that's how it looks now and it sits flush looks like it was made like that and I also used some prop adapters on the top if you don't know at all it's kind of weird because I just figured this out uh, randomly larger props have prop adapters that happen to fit perfectly over R RPSMA um, or SMA um, adapters so this is actually half of a prop adapter cut in half that I've squeezed into this little uh, crescent shaped hole and then there's another prop adapter inside there that happened to fit perfectly and it looks like it's made like that so it's a really cool remedy for getting that top to look good I know there are some 3d printed pieces out there and people will say oh well, these are better blah 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 well you know what I had this and it was free so I'm not gonna complain about that now the next thing let's talk about the Aurora 9 gimbals so these are actually Aurora 9 gimbals I know a lot of people have asked no I don't just have the Aurora 9 stick-ins I actually have Aurora 9 gimbals and I will say that the gimbal itself is a lot better or a lot higher quality than the stock Tyrannus gimbal uh, the stock Tyrannus gimbal it's great, but you know, over time, probably about six, seven months, you start getting some play as far as the potentiometers go. It's a little bit off around center stick, and it ends up not um, doing well, especially for precision flying. So I ended up going with the Aurora 9 gimbals. They're really freaking hard to find, so um, don't freak out if you go online and you, they're out of stock. I didn't cause that. It's just that they're really hard to find. Um, I have a lot of friends that are trying to get them, and they still don't have them, and they've been waiting months. So don't freak out. Um, I will say that... Through recent experiences, I have found that Spectrum gimbals will fit in a Tyrannus. So if you have DX9, if you have a DX8, if you have a DX6E or something like that, you can take the gimbals out, you cut off the little back shielding that uh, there's like a little cage on the back that stops the wires from getting in the gimbal during its movement, and it will fit perfectly direct bolt-on, and you literally do the exact same modifications that you would do with the Aurora 9 gimbals, as in you go in here and you clip the wires um, here, and then you clip the wires on the Aurora 9 gimbal, and you solder them together. There are plenty of videos on YouTube about Aurora 9 gimbal modification in a Tyrannus, so I'm not going to do a video about that, but I just wanted to let you know that I do have them in this radio, and I do think it makes a big difference, and I would prefer if Tyrannus or Free Sky would do something better with their gimbals, but, you know, you can't ask for everything. Um, the last modification that I have in here, aside from aesthetic modifications, is this Lumineer 2500 milliamp 3 cell. I've had this thing for a really long time. It's super small form factor, fits perfectly in the back of the radio, and I have no problems with it. It does its job, and it lasts a really long time compared to this stock um, nickel metal hydride, I think is what it is. So yeah, that's my other recommendation as far as modifications. I do have this little kickstand right here, which is a cool addition, but it's not necessarily um, a, a must have. It's just something I like, and I've kind of blinged it out myself. And as far as there's a couple little extra modifications I'll talk about, there is a little piece of foam here that I put on the inside of the, the door. It's a little thicker than the stock one, and I also put the fuzzy Velcro inside the hole right here so that it holds the radio tight. Uh, or not the radio, holds the battery tight so it doesn't jingle around inside there. And yeah, that's it as far as inside the radio goes. And I will say that I have noticed some improvements as far as range is considered and also RSSI recording numbers with this cable over the other cable. So I know there are going to be some sticklers out there that are going to say, oh, well, I have the same modification, blah, 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 blah. Um, and my 5 dbi antenna gives me all the range, but you know, I'm trying to get the maximum performance I can out of this internal RF module for 100 milliwatts, trying to stay um, legal-ish. Um, and yeah, 5 dbi mod gets you great range, and this cable cut to 84 millimeters is going to maximize the possible um, output and um, as far as performance goes with this internal RF module. You'll notice how quiet the radio is. It has no humming whatsoever from the internal RF um, situation. Hey guys, so we're going to do a little test here. I'm going to do a range test with a stock Tyrannus and, a, uh, and an Alien, and then I'm going to bind it to the other Tyrannus with the 5 dBi mod, and we're going to do the exact same thing, and we'll see how much farther the 5 dBi mod gets, if it even gets any farther. So this is a completely stock Tyrannus, and uh, this is a basically stock receiver. It'll be right next to the video transmitter, so... Anyways, we'll see how it does. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the Tyrannus into uh, range mode, which basically just gives you an RSSI warning. We're going to mount this vertically, and we're going to start walking down the street. And I'll just run down the street. Okay. All right. 
So we're already getting RF signal low. We got 51%. 39. RF signal critical. Telemetry lost. Telemetry recovered. Okay, so my body was in the way. So RF huh. signal low. We're getting pretty far away, but this is like a reduced range. Like the power output is reduced severely on the Tyrannus. I'm just gonna start critical. going until it looks like it's gonna feel safe. So, telemetry lost. Telemetry recovered. Okay. RF signal critical. So I'm like pretty far down the street. Telemetry lost. You can see the tip of the antenna is where the quad telemetry is. Telemetry recovered. RF signal critical. And I don't know. We're a good hundred yards away, I'd say. RF signal is actually still RF pretty good. Signal critical. Still pretty good. Remember this mailbox? Lost. No. Basically by this mailbox. It keeps coming back, like it's pretty good right now. But then it goes lost. away pretty quickly. Telemetry so this mailbox. Let's go do the 5 EBI one and see how that one does. Gonna go into range mode. Get the antenna oriented correctly. And we'll start walking away. So, just for record, right here, before, we totally were at way lower RSSI numbers, and we were getting RSSI low warnings. So, we haven't gotten an RSSI low, and we haven't dropped below 50 yet. Oh, there's 49, and we're about halfway. RSSI signal low. Okay. So we're still at 47 percent so this is the this is the thing that i noticed before so like although rssi is steadily RSSI going signal, down though. it's going down in a very linear fashion it's not hopping all over the place which is more predictable than something that's like going down and then hopping all over RSSI signal, though. here's the mailbox that we lost signal completely at. We're at 40%. Or 40. RSSI signal low. Okay, so there's a mailbox way back RSSI there. RSSI signal low. That I lost signal completely at. Still at 45%. Oh my god. I haven't done this test, so uh, this is the first for me. 46%. RSSI signal low. 45 still. We're at the next person's house. The mailbox is way back there. 42. RSSI signal right, This is critical. building confidence for sure. <laughs> oh my god. We're at 36. We're still good. Telemetry loss. Oh, telemetry loss. And it's probably because I'm going behind this hill. RSSI signal critical. So we're at 30, but I'm kind of going behind a hill. So, let's see if I can keep it up. RSSI signal critical. So we're getting a little bit, Telemetry lost. getting pretty low here. But like, watch, I should go here Telemetry and regain. RSSI signal critical. So it's like on or off. You go two steps back Telemetry and you lose it. Go two steps Telemetry forward recovered. and you gain it. <laughs> RSSI signal critical. So I am pretty much over Telemetry halfway lost. Like one and a half the distance that the stock Tyrannus got. Um, and this is in range mode, obviously. So I'm going to turn off this so it's not beeping anymore. So that's very impressive. That is over one and a half the, the distance. Um, and this isn't like I was going behind a hill. So if we were in a, an area where I wasn't going behind a hill, it might even go farther. But, so, we, I've been walking, and I'm not even back to the point yet where the stock Tyrannus lost signal, which is, which is crazy. I don't think it's only the 5 dBi antenna 
I do think that helps, but I do think that RG316 cable cutting it to the 84 millimeters, and this is where the stock Tyrannus lost, lost signal. <laughs> um, yeah, I think all of that has helped significantly. And I also have some special antennas coming from Alex Greaves, some 5 dBi dipole custom made. And yeah, that is going to hopefully boost all of this even further to be able to push the 2.4 link that we are currently using. Hey! <laughs> cool. Anyways, thanks for watching. This is what I have to deal with while I'm working. Attached to the leg. But it's done. I love this new feature in the KISS firmware when you have a failsafe. It beeps SOS at you until you regain signal. <laughs>